guys, and welcome back to another Lost Bits video right here on TetraBit Gaming, the series where we explore some scrapped, unused, and unseen content in video games. So it's been quite a while since I made a video covering a game with this pink boy. So I figured, hey, let's go way back and have a look at Kirby's first major home console game, Kirby's Adventure, and its overhauled portable remake, Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland. Kirby's Adventure is actually one of the first games that I got to play on the NES when I was younger, and to this day, it's still one of my favorite games in the series. The game has cool Kirby abilities, awesome visuals, hefty frame rate drops, what's not to love? And with all of that said, you guys, one, two, oh, oatmeal. It's time to find some lost bits. Alright, let's start this video with something big. Turns out there are sprites left over in the game for a scrapped mini Kirby ability. Similar to Mario getting a mini mushroom, this ability would allow the pink puffball to enter small crevices and such to get to hidden areas. This ability was actually reintroduced 12 years later after the release of Kirby's Adventure in Kirby and the Amazing Mirror. Another interesting tidbit is that due to where the graphics are located in the game's sprite banks, it is believed that UFO Kirby had actually replaced the mini ability. In addition to the mini ability, there are actually about 15 more cut abilities. According to Satoru Iwata, who at the time was a producer for the game, originally the game had over 40 enemy copy abilities, but the best were selected and this number in the final game was reduced to about 25. Masahiro Sakurai and Mr. Iwata have also gone on record to mention that some of the scrapped abilities included one in which Kirby could create blocks, one that would allow Kirby to ride a rocket, and one that would allow him to turn into an animal that would scratch and bite enemies. The latter two eventually did get used in future Kirby games as the rocket and animal abilities. Next up, let's move along to some of the game's unused graphics. When I was younger, I really liked seeing all the different pixel art icons for each of Kirby's abilities, and it looks like there are some icons that are left over or unused. The first of these is an unseen, untranslated Japanese invincibility icon that is for some reason still left over in the North American version of the game. The other icon is technically seen in the game, but it is unused for its intended purpose. A cannon icon was supposed to be used, obviously, when Kirby would get into a cannon. And although it goes unused, like I mentioned, it can actually be seen in the game for a split second when all of the different abilities flash during the roulette section of a random ability after Kirby inhales at least two of his enemies. Next are some water tiles that go unused. In the game's files, seven different water tiles can be found, however only two of them are actually used, and these are the rest that go unused. Here's what they would have looked like had they been animated and used in the game. In addition to these water tiles, there are some more unused tile sets. This set would be used in a sort of dark room that would change if Kirby used the light ability. A mock-up of this has been created to show how this tile set might have been used after an area had been lit up to reveal more of its features. And the last unused tile set is for what appears to be an early level hub heads-up display. By the looks of things, it was originally going to be much darker than what was used in the final game, and it looks like some of the graphics, like the Kirby icon, were also altered. And speaking of the level hub areas, there is also an unused stage door sign graphic for a 7th level. In the final game, the area with the most levels only has 6 stages, leaving this sign unnecessary resulting in it being unused. Oddly enough, by playing around with the game's memory, this sign graphic can actually replace some of the enemy's animations. Pretty weird. In addition to the normal levels, Kirby's Adventure also has a few mini-games in which you can win some extra lives. One of these is the Crane game, which too has some unused graphics. Among the graphics for it, there exists a sprite for having three credits in the game. In the actual game, however, the most we can get is two. But again, by messing around with the game's memory, this sprite and having three goes at the Crane game can actually be loaded into the game. Alright you guys, it's been a while since we've seen some cool unused test areas here on Lost Bits, but thankfully Kirby's Adventure has a ton for us to explore. Turns out there is an unseen area just at the start of the game on the second level. Normally when playing, when we get to this star, the game won't let us continue any further. But by doing some simple glitching, you can cause the star to not appear, and this lets us move further down to reveal giant letters spelling out HAL, the developers of the game. Since this game, these HAL rooms have appeared in a number of Kirby games. For some reason, there is also a lone broom hatter just chilling on the L. Alright, and now we move on to some scrapped areas. Starting them off, we have two unused level hub-like areas. The first one appears to have been a multi-world hub area which would have served as a shortcut to other stages. Each door will take Kirby to the hub area of a different level. 
the top four doors go to levels 1 through 4 from left to right, and then the bottom three doors lead to levels 5 through 7. The last bottom right door doesn't do anything, so my guess is maybe at one point the game was supposed to have another entire level. This room does look pretty complete, so I'm not really sure why they would have removed this hub area as a shortcut to other levels in favor of the system in the final game in which Kirby can only move between levels one at a time. The next hub-like area definitely looks less complete compared to the previous one. In this room, the top left door leads back to the previously mentioned hub area, and the five bottom doors lead to some other testing rooms, which we will get back to later. Again, just like in the last room, the last two doors don't have any sort of function. And another little tidbit for the fellow geeks out there, although at first the ladder pieces appear to be random and pointless, they are in fact representations of binary numbers above each door, numbering them 1 to 7. The next area we can access is the room from the game's tutorial. So I guess it is used, but you normally can't actually play in it, so it's still pretty slick. Next up are four unused rooms with some scattered backgrounds, each with a mini-boss to fight. However, the Bugsy, Mr. TikTok, Rolling Turtle, and Poppy Brothers Senior mini-boss versions here are faster and more difficult compared to those normally seen anywhere in the game. The next set of unused rooms are pretty interesting as they are early layouts that were used to test the Meta Knight fight rooms that were seen in the final build of the game. As you can see from these screenshot comparisons, these layouts are pretty much identical, just the aesthetics were completely revamped. I just think it's so cool that we can still access these early development versions of these rooms. In addition to the Meta Knight fights that were used, there are also three more layouts for what I'm assuming are layouts for areas to fight Meta Knight in which were scrapped for one reason or another. Moving along, we can also access some unused and seemingly unfinished museum rooms. These are the rooms in the game in which you basically just go to if you want to get a certain copy ability. The first museum room is home to a single chili enemy. One thing that you'll notice about all of these rooms is that the portraits behind the enemies are still left blank. The other unused museum rooms include one for Chili and Pengi, one for Twister, and one for both Rocky and Sparky. The last unused museum is the weirdest though. It is identical to the first I mentioned for the Chili enemy, but this one has a Sir Kibble enemy in it. But it's no ordinary Sir Kibble, as although it might look like him, it is actually a Togezo, the enemy that gives Kirby the Needle ability. And he also spawns in the wrong place too. Just all sorts of weird with this room. Next up is a pretty cool unused cannon puzzle. To get it right, you have to hit the stake near the cannon, quickly get the laser ability, and then time a shot so you can deflect it to the rope before an ice block will spawn and block the path. Completing this challenge, or just taking the door, will lead us into the next room. The next room is another puzzle again requiring a stake to be hit. Apparently there would have been a maximum tomato in the center, and Kirby would have to hit the stakes and grab the tomato before it fell off screen. Fast forwarding to 2002, Kirby's Adventure was remade for the Game Boy Advance with updated visuals. And just like the original game, this remake also has a plethora of unused test rooms. But before we get back to those, the remake also has some pretty cool unused stuff as well. First up is a pretty funny crude drawing placeholder icon for the fire ability. The Japanese text above also apparently translates closer to Faya than fire, as seen in the final version. I still can't get over this picture. I kind of wish all Kirby icons were stylized like this. Next is another funny piece of unused content that we normally don't get to see on Lost Bits, an unused pause screen. The screen says, being careful only takes a minute, but injuries last a lifetime. Dang. Rip Kirby. I'm guessing the screen was meant to be shown when pausing after losing a life. Several unused tiles for the debug rooms can also be found. Interestingly, many of these tiles are actually assets from Kirby's Dream Land 3 that made it here for some reason. And just before getting back to some more unused and unseen areas, I just want to say holy these were hard to uncover. Aside from some screenshot layouts of the areas, figuring out how to get here was quite the puzzle, so I guess it makes sense why I couldn't find any video footage of these areas. I guess it's time to be the first. Similar to the original, this game also has a large hub-like unused area with some doors that work and some that don't. This area is also much bigger than any room we've seen so far, and it features a water area to test the swimming mechanics, some explodable blocks, as well as some ramps likely to test Kirby's movement up and down slopes. The next unused room looks to be a general test area for level building. It features a lone scarfy, some platforms to fall through, and a bunch of blocks, some of which are in the shape of an S for some reason. Maybe S for Sakurai? I don't know. 
The next room is another long one with a bunch of slopes of varying degrees. Again, this was very likely just used to test Kirby's movement on different grades of ramps. The next unused room features the fire lion and some more blocks. Here we can see that some of them have some Japanese text on them. The blocks behind the lion translate to hammer, the ones above, easily, and the red ones in the back translate to bomb. Obviously, each of these describe which attack or move can be used to break them. The next area is room to a large body of water and a sort of wind tunnel. It looks like both of these were used to test how the air and water currents would affect Kirby. The next room just has some icy surfaces and spikes, again testing their effects on Kirby. As a little change of pace, the next room has some cannons that were likely used to test their functionality, as well as the vertical scrolling of the screen after Kirby has been shot out of one. There is also a small gang of Scarfies just chilling at the top. It's uh, best not to mess with them. Slightly less interesting is the next room which is much smaller and only has some slopes and a small body of water. The next unused room is again pretty underwhelming and is just a test room for a mini boss fight. The second last unused room is basically a greatest hits of all the different tested terrains so far like slopes, spikes, icy blocks, and platforms to fall through. And for the last unused test room we have, guess what, more slopes. All of these slopes are at the top of the screen so I'm guessing they were used to test how Kirby would react on these slopes at the top, likely to make sure that he wouldn't clip off the screen or anything. Oh, and guess what, it turns out that the HAL Zone also makes a return in this remake. This time it's not as easy to access as in the original and it requires a cheating device, making it even more interesting that the developers still decided to leave it in the game. This time however, the broom hatter that was on the L in the original is gone. Wow, that was a lot of test rooms to get through, that's gotta be a record for the channel. What a triumph is that? And with that concludes this Lost Bits video on both Kirby's Adventure and Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what other games you'd like to see me do a Lost Bits on next. If you're new to the channel and enjoyed the video, please be sure to subscribe and check out my other social media pages as well, which will all be linked in the description below. But as always guys, thank you all so much for watching today and for all of your amazing support, and I will see you in a bit!